one of the great experiences in, in entomological life is to watch an emergence of periodical cicadas. Nature and science predicted that this brood would emerge. Brood 10 of the periodical cicadas is the largest of the 17 year cicada broods. The periodical cicadas are unique to the eastern half of the United States. They're uh, beautifully adapted to life in the eastern deciduous forest. And they have two life cycles. There's a 17 year life cycle and a 13 year life cycle. You'll hear this sound that sounds like it's raining. And what it is that the cicada is climbing up and then get, losing their grip and falling on the leaf litter. And you look at the grass and you'll see these the grass is moving, like there's a breeze along the ground. And that cicada is climbing up the blades of, uh, blades of grass. They find immediately a vertical surface, like a, a trunk of a tree, side of a building, a fence post. I've even seen cicadas climb up a parked car tire. They lock their, their legs into that surface and then start the transformation into an adult. And that occurs when the, the, nymph, the uh, nymphal skin cracks the thorax and then extends through the head and a creamy white adult cicada wriggles its way free. And it does a sit up, grabs the head of its old skin, pulls the abdomen free. Here it is, it's all shriveled up winged, <laughs> all white cicada, red eye, bright red eyes, two black patches behind the head, and it doesn't look anything like a cicada yet. What happens next is it starts to harden its sexual skeleton and wings, and as it does that, it also turns black, and the wings get their typical orange colored veins and orange legs. That coming out of the ground and turning black takes about three hours. Then once it's turned black, it climbs up the trees for five, it hangs out out there for like five days. Now after five days, it, you'll start hearing isolated singing. Then you start having these chorusing, where they're, the males are gathering in trees, so they're singing. Females fly into the tree. She'll flick her wings at a certain point at the call. The male hears that. He turns and faces her. Their eyes meet. And they walk closer. He sings. She flicks. And they start copulating. That lasts several hours. And then uh, uh, the female will, after a, couple, a day or so, within a day or so, starts laying her eggs. Then they all die. One of the difficulties of working with periodical cicadas is that every emergence leads to all sorts of new hypotheses of what's going on. But in reality, that's an observation of one. I wanted to figure out how to get more observations. Cicada safari is the next evolutionary stage of crowdsourcing with periodical cicadas. It starts with Gideon Smith in 1840. Gideon Smith used to write newspaper columns and send the newspapers all over the Eastern United States saying, I'm expecting the locusts, that's what they called them in those days, to emerge in your area this, this uh, May and June. I would appreciate if your readers send me notice that they've seen them. In 1902, the USDA sent out 15,000 postcards. This idea of crowdsourcing like this goes, you know, with whatever's the technology of the day. In 1987, I had a cicada hotline a phone number people could call and tell me where the cicadas were. 2004, we've got email now. And so we, uh, I, I asked people to email uh, if they see cicadas. So now we, here we are in, in uh, 2021, uh, 17 years later, and we have smartphones. We've got smartphones with a camera. We've got smartphones with GPS capabilities. And it was like, this would be really cool is we also can accept 10 second videos. And with the videos, we've got audio. With the audio, I can tell you what species is singing. That we know, now we know who's mating. And so that's a real kicker. And, and it's very easy when these things are chorusing to tell what species are there. Now, a chorusing center is when you have hundreds, maybe even thousands of these cicadas singing at once in a tree. The tree is screaming with these calls. If you're within uh, a few feet of these trees, it's going to be at 96 decibels in some cases. That's the highest I've measured. And to put that in perspective, uh, I had an opportunity to measure the uh, the sound levels of jets flying into Heathrow. And those are about 80. So it is louder than the flyway into Heathrow Airport. Well, one of the neat things about that I've done in the book, uh, uh, you know, it's called the Brood 10 edition. Uh, but uh, I have a full chapter in there on what we learned from every single emergence of Brood 10. Uh, in 1970, uh, Bob Dylan got an honorary doctorate from Princeton University, and the, and the cicadas were in the distance. A few weeks later, he recorded the song, The Day of the Locust. Oh, the benches were stained with tears and perspiration, 
The birdies were flying from tree to tree. There was little to say. There was no conversation as I stepped to the stage to pick up my degree. <laughs> and the locust sang off in the distance. Yeah, the locust sang such a sweet melody. Oh, the locust sang off in the distance. Yeah, the locust sang, and they were singing for me. <laughs> 